<laughs> Welcome to Offstage Hang, episode. Darren Lim, Rames, episode 88. 88. Uh-huh. We are here in Crazy, Crazy Ramen. Ramen in Lilac, Lilac Marikina. Order, panorama. Panorama. Nasira ang aircon sa studio. <laughs> so rest back tayo dito. Do your intros, Mr. Lim. So this week we are joined by, for me, una ko siya nakilala sa... Giniling Festival. Napanood ko siya sa bayan ng alumni. Wow. Nagda-drums. Tapos sabi ko, grabe tong siling giniling na to. Grabe yung kanta. Tapos uh, parang parokya na mas metal. Yun, 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 yung, yun yung dating sa akin. So yun yung unang, unang encounter ko. And then later on, I feel like he was one of the first parang totoong on- internet superstars of, of this era, di ba? Advanced. Di ba? Advanced eh. So yun, without further ado, please welcome uh, Bogart, uh, Marco Antonio. Thanks, bye. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me, you guys. It's awesome. Bloody awesome to be here. <laughs> Bloody truth. In our language, down under, double city. We would say, solid gay bay. <laughs> what are you uh, busy with at the moment? Nung nakita tayo kanina pagbaba mo, you've been uh, overdriving. Mm-hmm. Land tripping. Land so, tripping. So, ano ba eh? Content trip. So, we've been like, I, we drove from Davao all the way here to Manila. Kailan to last week? A uh, couple of days ago. I know, we, we arrived yesterday. So, the trip took us around three days. Three days. So, um, the first day kasi we took off mga around noon kasi and we arrived at the tip of Mindanao around noon and then off to the Visayas in the afternoon. You don't want to drive kasi in some of the parts in, in the Visayas regions simply because of the road conditions. Mm. Sometimes it'll ruin what are, car. What, what car you're bringing ito? Yeah, this, this one. one. It's a Geely. It's an SUV. Uh, Back in the man, Geely. <laughs> so, ma- matted out din eh. No? Oh, nga. Okay. Yeah, Bagay. It's a solid ride. It's his ride. It's Jay's ride. Very solid talaga. And then, I know, two ferries. One is a three-hour ferry and one is a one-hour ferry. So, both are fine. And then, the roads generally are fine. Basta as long as there are certain areas that you travel at night for because the roads get smaller. Ano talaga? Naka waves na. ka lang lang. Waves. Wala. We were Wala. just winging it lang talaga. Grabe. We even stopped by Mayon and we, dumating kasi Mayon, it was night time already. Bicol? Bicol. Okay. But the conditions were great. Stars were out. So, we did like a Long exposure shot uh, while exposing yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, ilan kayo? Dalawa lang. Dalawa lang kami. Kami na. We just so it's a content trip, as much content as we can gather, so that for the next few months, you know, maybe we can just edit and chill and think while we think of what next, what's the next batch. I've been also been doing like the drum thing. Uh, I know I've been trying to get back to my roots, so I haven't been giniling in a long time. And I haven't been drumming in a long time, or I've been in a band in a long time, and you know the itch is there. Uh, it's coming back. So I figured I've been I've been collaborating with lots of local musicians, talaga. Uh, whoever I can get friends, and, you know, it's just trying to scratch an itch. I need to play music with awesome musicians, bay. And what's great, and I shoot these things, we shoot these things with an awesome team. People get to appreciate because it's part nostalgia. What we've been doing is taking old songs people love in the old days talaga we incorporate the element of the actual music that they fell in love with while adding uh, the drums and whoever I'm collaborating with um, I collaborated with guitarist X8 um, but now I've been doing mostly with bassist because it's like you know a drum and a bass kind of thing and so, the vocalist so and the Man, may, si Manu nakita ko yung si video si Manu bay, so good at ano bay, at editing the audio and then the video he does everything Manu Gen 2 Manu Gen 2 TV man you gotta check that's on YouTube out. that's on YouTube is he also on uh, TikTok he no I don't think he's on TikTok you're on TikTok I'm on TikTok you know? so you're doing more <laughs> TikTok than YouTube uh, what's the hierarchy the YouTube cause is like the long format, right? Mm-hmm. And from that, you get the pieces that you put into your reels, your stories, and your TikTok. You just, you know, Ga- re-edit it. important that you have reels? Na kang it's important, ba, because it's important that you capture every market. There are, ano, kasi, you gotta pay attention to, like, for example, when Facebook announces certain things, like these, you know, just like how a stockbroker would watch out for things in the market that would fluctuate the price mm-hmm. of the stock. Mm-hmm. It's like for the algorithms, you're thinking more for the algorithms. Before, kasi they put a lot of premium on reels, like Facebook, for example. Mm-hmm. So if you put on the reels there, automatic, boom, like, ang bilis niyo mag-viral. 
Bakit? Like, you know, because they were pushing people to, sige, maglagay ka sa reels, we'll make sure people see it. Mm. And then that's what they did. But then after a while, they reversed their decision saying, maybe we're not gonna focus so much on the reels now. That's it now. Thank you very much. Wait, I'm still curious. I can't get over the land tripping thing. Yeah. There's nobody, not a lot of people do it. <laughs> see, see, Franco was doing it in the pandemic. Do you, how do you plan? How do you plan a land trip? That's how many days to go? Like it took us three, three days. days. Three days is like what? Do you plan? Barang we look at maps or we're gonna be booking Airbnbs. How do you? How do, how does it work? Generally speaking, because you can't really book for much because you don't know what time you're gonna get there and things like that. The ferry is like one of the choke points. The rest of the way, the roads generally fine. Certain areas a bit more potholy than the others, <laughs> but the really the where it all culminates talaga and it can be blocked talaga are the ferries because there are a few of them and then they're vulnerable to weather and all kinds of things like being broken down and then suddenly the number of surging vehicles talaga so if you can cross so that's why we prioritize crossing over eating it's like okay. we need to because find it's out. a few hour uh, na sa ocean yeah no yeah three hours it's not a whole day one. it's not a whole it's day, not a whole day. Okay. just a few hours now but the thing is still if you get there are only a few ferries left so if you get left behind let's take it'll still take a while for them to come back oh, refresh okay, okay. before they can take a load and maybe back up tomorrow so my pila and they don't travel at night yes oh, my pila okay. so the sobrang ano talaga choke point talaga siya. what about hotels the thing about now is modern society by as well as digital currency by you can just when we get to a place, man, gabi na. Pagpagod na. Bye. Open. Book an app. Oh, pay with uh, Gcash, whatever. Uh, and that's it. You just, and then, uh, you waste the way to the hotel. Uh, oh, it's just yeah, over yeah. there lang pala. Bam, you're there. Rested. So you don't book pre- beforehand, but you still get good deals because some of them, hanap some of lang, these, lang lang hotel apps, bye. To come in, we spent, when we go to the hotel, we checked out the price. This room where we stayed in, the standard room, two separate single beds was nice. It was supposed to be like 2K. But on the app, I just pay like 800 pesos for it. And then you say you're making content. Do you have a plan in mind? Wala. Like, so when do you stop and when do you, what do you do? So what, what goes on in your mind? I talk to some content creators like Will Dasovich who's really professional about these things. And he puts, he really thinks about these things when he goes there. Na, he has a plan for when he shoots things. He has a plan for when he's gonna go. When he's talking to you, if in a podcast like this, he's actually editing in his mind already. For me though, I took a different approach. It's like, I'm gonna go that way because it sounds extremely strenuous. One for someone better fit, which is for Will, but not for me. <laughs> so I, we decided na we just go. And when we spot something, we do it. And then the trip then as well. So we went to San Juanico Bridge. It's like one of our longest bridge between summer and late. He has this as a sunroof kasi. So he opened it, had like a 360 camera while he was sitting on top. And that's like one of the contents we're thinking. Another thing he was thinking is, one kasi you have to produce kits as well. For, apart from the major travelers, you have to produce small segments. So this one of the skits is, he's dragging me to, bye, uh, punta tayo dun lang sa kanto, sige. But then he ends up, traveling all over the place and then I keep asking along the way but kailan ba tayo makakarating parang kind of thing maya 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 nandyan na tayo what kind of thing do you pre-plan these skits or while driving when I use it I've never and when when writing Bogart stuff or any of the things that I've done talaga most some a lot of these things I, I do on the fly it's hard to pre-plan some of these things um Except for when some of the stuff that I've been doing, like yung English Tagalog Bisaya content, comedy content. That's funny. Thank you. I have to write it beforehand as it comes. I have to build it until it makes enough for an episode, which is like around a minute. Ano talaga? Before Filipino I can, 101. Ano, Filipino 101, the Philippines 101. I've been doing, and I don't know if it's gonna come out on time, because you know, I've been doing Bisaya 101, but I'm trying to focus on Philippines 101 because there are so many things that people just take for granted. This is what I've been doing. You know, the Bisaya 101, basically the Tagalogs have it as well. The Pangasinenos have it as well. Everybody has it. But I'm just pointing out these things that people tend to overlook na because they're just busy. And then like when they go look back on it, oh nga no! And this goes back to what YouTube taught us in the beginning, back in the early days when we were starting out on YouTube. And they said two of the key things of success in the early days of YouTube, and I still believe it to be true now. Oh, actually, it's not as true now, but I want to keep it that way, is... Collaboration and relatability. 
So that's what the advice is in the old days. Now, kasi collaboration is gone because some of the new creators, particularly for TikTok, they do everything themselves. They do this character, then they do this character, and then they do all the characters, and then they put it together, and it's all them, just them, nobody else. And it works. It you works. You think it's the pandemic? That's why it started, diba? Less. I, I think it's always been there. The pandemic is just one way of helping it get out there. It's na, the future. Na mag-isa na lang yung, yeah, yung creator. It's the future. Even in music, you can see it. From a whole band to just one guy doing everything and it works it works works, and we can't deny it because that is the future you know so that's what we've been doing but you know you can also be hard ass and hold on to the past because there's value in there as well and i like collaboration and relatability and has been proven by the numbers in the videos they still work Pa- paano naman na form yung Bogart na character? What was going on in your mind? Like, how did you... Paano mo siya na-create the, the, the Aussie accent? How did you develop the character? The Bogart character was born out of poverty. <laughs> what? And I was working, but I was working. I was working as a production assistant, right? And living... Uh, in wh- where? In Davao? Uh, or here in Manila. Here in Manila. I, what year was this? 2000? 2009. Nine. Nakatira from Davao... I um, went here to, co- uh, to college. In college, 2002. Uh, Kalai, I was also uh, in Kalai. Yeah, nice. You know, I went looking for your Kalai, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What was my room? I was basement guest. <laughs> basement! <laughs> I was basement boys and boys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, I, and then I just stayed here. And then I went after UP, you know, Chicago didn't say UP and everything. Yeah. Corporate world, like call centers and everything. And I did pretty well in a month there. And then I just decided to leave it and then just live three years by na alang, like around 20 pesos a day it just bare bare just i just didn't want to do anything be the laziest i can be but still survive without having to suck dick <laughs> <laughs> you know kind of be- i still have my standards you know bare minimum so i went that way and then i found this gig uh, being a production assistant because the production manager the one in charge for hiring production assistant was a bandmate a penguin. Okay. He's like, you need a, a job? See si si Kat Castro okay. from our vocalist basis basis. And then she's like, you need a job? So you get pays two hundred pesos like uh, per shooting day and they only have like two shooting days a week. But the but the benefits of the gig was the food that came in style for everyone. Mm, the catering. I bring <laughs> I could bring it all home. <laughs> and that would sustain me for the whole week by like Saref and shit like that. Ganon talaga. And then slowly they gave me Dito ka harap ka. Ganun ka lang. Bodyguard ka ng Madama Oring. So, yes. Ano yung show? Ano yung show? It's called Front Act Hecklines. For what? For I know, it was YouTube? Like, no, not No, yet. it's for TV. They were mm. block timers and RPN. RPN. By, yeah. And these guys were ahead of their time because they're doing doing skits and just putting them together. And skits, like, talagang super stupid ass skits talaga. By, <laughs> and they just wanted to put these out. Nobody was watching them. But, you know, luckily... What were your course in college? Doing, what was your course? I was industrial engineering. <laughs> I <laughs> What? It's a cool course, my boy. Cool course. And I was like, do this scholarship? So after that, <laughs> First year, wala. It's pa- parang alam ko part of the myth rin yun na, oh, yung drummer niya, alam ko parang eng, parang oh, engineering show. Oh, wala, part niya eh. One of the legends na sa akin sa Kalay because you know, the the meal is like on the rice. Mm. Uh, ano, diba? I did 13 by you know, 13. <laughs> and then in the next, ano, nag-town Pero hall. Pero that's one, one ulam, diba? Oh, one, yung ulam. ulam. Yung ulam was dalawang longganisa by... And I had that's to, 13, uh, 13, 13 cups of rice. You really love your carbs. They, I, I told you, bae. They had us gather <laughs> everyone, by, and then they announced a new memorandum, though, by that everyone only got up to three rice. The fourth rice and above, <laughs> people had to pay na. People had like a rally because you promised us it'd be free rice oh, at the nah. beginning. And so they had to change it. But I'm just so happy that they yeah, had not to not everybody, diba? Like, some people don't even eat rice. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm just so happy that I did so much damage that they had to do that. Yes. <laughs> Changing the rules. <laughs> exactly. hey, wait, and then you were getting extra work in the production acting. Yeah. And then how? And then what happened? And then next? eventually, the show also had like an online radio podcast kind mm. of thing. But it was on Before radio. the podcast. I told you they were ahead of their time by these guys. Si Jaco De Leon, who's the si producer Jaco, of the okay, show. Okay, okay. Uh, si Elsie De Leon, who's also the guitarist vocalist of Reclamo. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, si Stanley Chi, who's still a stand-up comedian and still has shows. Are they right related? Now. Si no. The no, De they're Leons, not. They're not. No. No. Are the De Leons? Well, si Elsie and... Uh, si Ciro, yung drummer. And at saka si Marco brothers. De Leon. They're brothers. They're brothers. But are they related to Jaco? No, they're not. Oh, no, they're no. De Leon. Okay, okay. So they were, they had a podcast kumbaga in a radio station 
the crew and I nung shows nila just drinking drunk a little bit decided to si kita wagan natin sila because I've been always I've been able to do accents since I was a kid back to where your question where I got the accent is you know been much of an a, a very introverted kind of kid talaga growing up so I didn't really go out that much with mga barkadas but I kept mostly myself watching a lot of TV cable TV. And then I had, I've always had this ability to mimic the accents, talaga. And I've been, and every time I'm, I'm out somewhere, I narrate everything I see for my own pleasure. <laughs> you know, I love the accent. Who doesn't? Like people say, because if I could speak like that, I would never stop talking to myself. And it is true, because you can just, oh fuck, it sounds awesome. <laughs> so so you didn't live in Australia? No, I did, bro. Mga ten days. <laughs> uh, no. So you're doing the accent. Off of the TV shows, yeah, like Steve Uman, like, you know, <laughs> Steve Crocodile Hunter, Crocodile you know, yeah. Dundee. You know, yes, that's not a knife. <laughs> <laughs> what other accents do you do? Uh, I've been, I've lost some of the accents that I used to be able to do because before I could just do whatever, but then Bogart took over, and that's pretty much been the whole thing. But you know. Tobin Martin and his hair. My name British, is uh, British. Uh, I certainly you do the British accent, sir. Certainly. Ma different kind of uh, British accent but like my my Queen's English and then you've got the the Cockney kind of English I, you know but I've lost some of these I know talaga over time um, you know some of the newer generation ones they can do it really better talaga but you know they, these were all ways lang of entertaining myself and I started to explore early on but then certain characters kind of took off more I even have Russian character his, <laughs> na- his name is Comrade Boris Sanovovich <laughs> Sanovovich <laughs> Sanovovich. <laughs> Sanovovich, I like it, I like it. So it's like, she's like nine star gainer from Soviet Union. <laughs> yeah. uh, because of the woke generation, do you get into trouble with that? So that's the thing, by I have like skits that if you release that now, like I debated before, like the Philippine Squatter. Uh, so back then it's like, it was, and even now, you know, just thinking about it wasn't really making fun of anyone it was just like you know but if you put it out now definitely we can't cancelable kind not, of thing you have to think about it now exactly oh. you know these things that like na, I know so uh, but what I've been finding is you know that so far I've been able to dodge the man issues and stuff like that uh, so that's why you know I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think that uh, I'm like the Mr. Shuli of the internet generation. <laughs> he's just, everyone kind of knows him, but not really know him, but he's always going to just be there. So just because simply he doesn't have really that much issues to talk about. And like the really noisy creators that are really upfront, it's, it's easy to create some, ano talaga, by just create noise talaga that will shock people. So many things that we have will shock people, but it's in the cutting table. <laughs> it's not about these things, you know? But ko, like, I think also, for me, to me, like, yung, the earlier content that you were talking about, it's it was more of, syempre, may pagka-social commentary rin na... It is, that would, be, that would, yeah, that would make you think na parang more about that kind of, you know, like, yung, exactly. yung things. So, maybe nakita yun ng tao sa'yo na... Like, okay, yung intention, na parang was that the part of the... It was, most definitely, because a lot of the internet watching people at the, in those days, uh, where people were aligned into that kind of thinking, mang goodbye. So if you put out that kind of video, you know they know it is satire, we're not making fun of anyone, we're showing them something that you draw them in with laughter, but then you, you right hook them with the lesson. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So... And that's why in the old but now kasi because of all these ano parang it's like it's like when you go to uh, a tribal man and you tell him you know alam mo mahirap ka bakit wala kang kotse wala kang aircon wala kang bahay wala kang shit and he'll fucking tang ina ko nga no <laughs> but then when nobody told him these things he fucking owned all this land fucked any woman he wanted kill any animal and eat it nobody's gonna stop him go to bed the whole fucking day until the end of his life but you know it's kind of like that of a scenario you know what I mean mm-hmm. ano lang talaga it's a perspective kind of thing so a lot of people's perspectives have been changed because they tell them you should be offended by this but you should be offended why aren't you offended by this I'm angry at you now for not being offended it's just a whole bunch of huh, 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 huh. everyone's just anxious and just waiting to do something just so they can move forward by is it harder for ca- comedy these days oh most definitely but then you know if you're really, really game, 
you know either way wherever it falls if it's a super viral because it's super funny or super viral because people are offended in the end you're still gonna make money you know but depends on what your priorities are mine is longevity bay I want to do this and not have to explain too much to my kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> you mentioned that you na nagwork ka sa RPN that you were ano difference ng working for a station like that and then like right now like mas you I'm, I'm I'm assuming you're an independent creator, right? So yeah. What's an any differences? My pros, my cons. The rules. Another thing, kasi that I've been ano kasi the rules kasi by when in terms of creating content or the type of media or material. Because I'm also if a lot of people don't know, I'm also a board member at the MTRCB. Uh, so I'm the I one know, who I gives know. the like. Do that's you a censor PG. yourself? <laughs> Isn't that, so that's the thing. I'm censored. <laughs> that's the thing. It's gonna be funny. No, but the thing is, Sorry. people think we're censors, but it's not. Maybe in the old days when it was called the board of censors. It was really, but what uh, we do there is no, just it's the word of cancelled. No, not the word of cancelled. It's just you know the. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. That's okay. <laughs> it was a big thing, talaga. It's a big thing. That's why it's. I'm glad that it's making buzz right now. People are talking about you know what's happening online because uh, in the early days, that's the, one of the reasons why they created the MTRCB in the first place because it was happening on TV. And it's like, but we need to we need to put something there to protect the kids. And the MTRCB is a, mm -hmm. an agency that's meant to protect the kids, mm -hmm. to help the kids. It's not really meant to suppress the industry because actually, by the mandate of the MTRCB is to work with the industry. Because if there is no, if you keep suppressing, there is no industry for everyone. They don't make money. We shut down. Stuff like that. Finally, so, a funny guy in the MTRCB. <laughs> he needs a funny guy. He needs someone who need who shows his ass on the internet. Somebody who understands the medium. Exactly. That's what I'm telling you guys. Now it's good. I'm there. I keep the balance. You know. So we get all these different personalities from all walks of life. You got lawyers. You've got um, former mga principals and teachers, housewives, all coming together. And then you got me. So it's just like a good balance, talaga. So. That's why when it comes to ano talaga, monitoring uh, the balance about the rules kind of thing online, obviously there are no rules. There are no rules established yet. It's more on your morality is your own set of rules. You know, how far are you willing to stretch your rules, you know, um, for what you need, want to achieve. For me, like I said, it's more on longevity, so I try to stay on the side that this is so funny without trying to, without being offensive in the future sense, you know, because one of the things by, you don't need hate, nobody needs just the hate. It's just an easier world to live in when you function outside the, the room of hate. That's why when all these vloggers, they come together and just being angry just to create engagement and noise and social media, I'll just stay out of it and it's fine by, because, you know, I can always make money some other way. Mm -hmm. But they do their thing because you know why? Because that, my friend, is the future. That's, it is going that way. And it's up to individually, each and every one of us, and I'm also a parent, you know, being an MTRCB, it's up to us to monitor our children and not blame anyone for what happens yeah. because it is us. Yeah. And it is also the decision of our children themselves, eventually when they grow up, as to what they want to do. So what these creators, content creators are doing, even if they're promoting there's an even there's even a big talk online about content creators promoting gambling applications. By yeah, you, you yeah, are aware of these yeah, things, right? the So it's a big thing about online. It's like you create well, content. We grew up in the province. Gambling wasn't bad, no man. Exactly. It's, it's Mark, excess anyone. gambling, which is bad. You yeah. just leave but it alone because that's it. Right? It is the future. Exactly. It's just option. So I choose not to do it. Person, mm -hmm. it's a personal thing. But if people want to advertise it and people want to do it, then do it. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, you don't, you're not going to get anything if you suppress things. You just you, you let it go, its natural flow. And if it doesn't work like in nature does, it always has a natural end. Wait, I want to come back to yung question ni Darina. Once you started doing the, these extra bits for the, for the show, right. who pushed it na parang, I think we have something here. Right. Who pushed it? Who found? Who found? Who saw the vision? The future. Who the show it? ended in 2010 <laughs> because mm. it was like block timers on TV, and then the sponsors there were like two or three keeping the show alive, and they finally said, "Okay, na kami." Uh. So Jaco, the producer of the show, decided at 2010, it's like, "Wala tayong <laughs> Upload na lang natin in this new thing called YouTube. Uh. Para lang meron tayong copy for future generations to kasi pinagirapan din natin to. Mm -hmm. And literally back in the old days. 
it was like 20,000 views overnight. In the old days, it was like, whoa. Even now, you'd still think it was uh, like 20,000 uh, uh, views uh, uh, overnight without even without even Facebook pushing <laughs> it. You know, it's just a link on YouTube. But in the old days, they had like a featured YouTube video, eh, like in Central Video. Ka. It was doing so well, it did that. And they, Jaco called me, and then the news agency suddenly called. So it was that one video, the Philippine snitcher. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, treated like a creature, and then hunted with a tracking device. <laughs> And then people were like, just... Who was, who was doing the camera for the, those? Things? So, the, whenever we did those Bogart videos, kasi, si Jaco De Leon, the producer, they were always at the office lang. So, they let us... I like the way it worked because, you know, you don't micromanage people. You let them do their thing where they're good. So, it was the camera, was the director slash camera guy, si Mark Misa. And it was just me. There was just the two of us. What well, camera were you using? We were using like the old school camera that you put those tiny tapes. TV, yeah. TV. But it was a TV camera, but it was small. The mini DV. Oh, but it was like with the thing big here, and then it became small, and then big, and with a handle here that you could hold. Yung pang like skateboard yun, de ba? Oh, yun, ganon, ganon, yung, exactly. Yun yung hanggang yung, ngayon, the skateboard was like that because of the handle, Ex- de ba? The handle part, exactly. That's what we used, and it's just the two of us. And like we, when you asked earlier, <laughs> do you plan these road trips? It's the same way we don't plan these Bogart videos. We say, Mark, we need to shoot something. Sige, by come over later at 8 or 7. Okay, sige, tara. Come over and then, you know, we do the things that cool guys do. <laughs> and then we get inspired. Sinong? And then we... Ang ng kotse, umuusok eh. Sino yung favorite mong collaborator then and now? Like, kabatuhan ng ano? I know. Ideas. Like then it was like see Mark that was he was my guy back then because he was just you know abs- uh, most days I it would come from me because I get all these crazy ideas the other person is great because he balances them out from it takes out all the exaggerated edges and makes mm-hmm. it something actually workable and that you can present it's like a screenwriter you know what I mean just writing it for the camera and it balances out now I don't have Mark anymore but we're still good I have Jaco. So is Jaco is the so one. Jaco still, you were still working with Jaco. Yes, these I worked days. with Jaco a lot these days, especially for you mga national kind of content. The Bisaya ones are mostly me, um, but the other content that is like pag the Bogart with the Aussie accent with the English talaga. Jaco is the one yung kabatuan ko talaga. He has the same sense of humor. If you don't know, he's like the son of Joey De Leon. Yes, so there's yes. the pedigree there of comedy talaga. That, the DNA. The, about comedy lang talaga and si Jaco talaga is a genius when it comes to comedy because he's. And he comes from the same backgrounds as I do because based on all the cable shows that we watched growing up. <laughs> That's how you know it. And the same kind of, uh, in terms of music, completely different. But the same kind of uh, humor is, and then pag binato mo, he has crazy ideas. Ako naman nag And it's like, a, it's been a working relationship ever since. And he's also my manager. Um, and it's been like that talaga. It's like a, a brother that, you know, you that you work with but, but did you back to yung diba na, na, nabanggit nga ni Rims yung sa cancel culture ganun did you expect yung yung nag-expect ba kayo ng reaction na ganun or what what were you expecting when you put it out no and in, in the old days we weren't expecting anything we didn't even think people would see it um <laughs> Can't, being cancelled was the least of our problems though because those were the days when wala pang anak, wala pang time, wala na na time pera. So I mean, who cares, man? What happens to these things? If it becomes viral because of a bad thing, then might even be a good thing. Like, yes, we're famous finally. A- ano yung unang moment na nag nagpana sa na, uy, parang medyo ano, na, dun sa YouTube na parang may nagsabi ba sa na, oh, parang na, napanood kita, ganun. Tumawag ni news. <laughs> they called I know. And then, that was so funny, the reporter, from GMA, I'm not gonna mention names, so they went to the room talaga, and they really did ask me kung totoo ba daw talaga yung snatcher. Sorry, yung... Yung <laughs> snatcher, totoo ba daw talaga yun. Na, did, we really film him, and did we really tag him, and follow him like a documentary? How you go, ay, hindi mama, ako <laughs> yan. <laughs> talaga? That's so funny, why? <laughs> But that was like the moment when I saw myself and I was still living. I was living in this ano, place na, uh, it's still on the, it's on YouTube. You can watch the, ano, the report where I was living. Very tiny place, rat infested. <laughs> and then the very first moment I said, because I was like, ito na talaga yun. I was one of the lowest points in my life without having to suck dick. I was in the bathroom thinking talaga. And then the first call that came in, it's like a six figure deal for this brand. And I was like, fucking hey, ito na yun, man. Oh, yeah. Started coming in na. 
and then that's it. From there, it kind of took off. That again, I'm glad I have that video documenting the place. Because when I came in, the camera guy and everything, I had to. <laughs> Because <laughs> <laughs> it was that raw, and it was just like, and I just wanted to show how dirty the place was. Talaga, and it was so basic, and it's a good way to ano lang talaga yeah. now. And to not thinking of anything, cancel culture, no, wala talagang pake. You had a stand in Katipunan eh, for, a, I did. for a while. Uh, did you get free food every day? I did. I, you know, it's I, good I, food I, there, I, yes. I, and they had branches uh, everywhere. Uh, so, ipang Are you still uh, with them? I'm still with them. Uh, cool, I'm still cool. with them, man. And they're still there. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. Because they're still there. Finally, I'm oh, oh, past oh, Atene. Oh, and then, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I'm busy, sir. Then you stop, right? Right in front of you. Yeah. That's where the traffic begins. Yes, again. exactly. Yeah, so well, people get to see my that's face. That's like the perfect go. place. Exactly. And it even worked through the pandemic. The place survived. And then having multiple branches, but then everything closed down and that remained. And now we have like another another thing I've been keeping busy with is we have this other business called Kanin Baboy. Mm-hmm. Just like think of the Indonesian Babi Guling, but Pinoy version. I think I saw that in La Union. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Friends lang talaga who, who brought it there probably. Okay. Our branch is in Shargao. Shargao. Oh, Shargao. I saw Shargao, Shargao. yeah. That's right. That's so, right. and it's great because one of the you know the partners I have they're crazy guys then one of the reasons na pinangalan kanin baboy because apart from the fact that it is a plate with the kanin baboy and other things it's like when you order it by ordering on kanin baboy and that's just one of the things that's so funny that struck us that's why we named the thing ano lang talaga <laughs> just to hear someone order kanin baboy wait let's talk about your music what kind of music were you listening to in growing up in the province provinciano provinciano, provinciano Davao City ano sa so, um, city talaga cause now you live in mm, provincia sa mas malayo pa sa Davao diba? yes it's about mga by bus 8 hours away from wow. Davao um, from and when I was growing up uh, my dad kasi was business was lights and sound ah. so we had uh, meron din siyang yung mga bands na minamanage niya who would play at mga fiestas and they would play Metallica Pantera and it's so funny yeah, because may mobile then mobile that's, that's, with the lights and everything that's what you call yeah, mobile mobile oh, <laughs> may combo may, may kasamang combo, combo. Oh. Well, may combo. <laughs> so that's my dad's business and I, I grew up na pumunta kami sa mga nagtutour kami sa mga probinsya these small towns and the the guy would play Metallica diba? and my dad with this yung parang bote ng gas for the lighter fluid he would come on stage habang nagigitara he would pour all the lighter fluid wow. in a circle around the guy and he's just standing, light it up. There'd be fire there. And while the guy's playing guitar, he's standing right beside, just looking at the fire, tending it when he needs to. But he's just standing there on stage for everyone to see. But in my day, I was growing up, and I would go on these tours all night, gabito eh. And just the uh, yung mga show band, pero the show the show band kasi kasi ay wala pa naman yung mga ano na music then it was all ano talaga was mainstream so you have Green Department ah, it was Manila bands Shackol yes it was all Manila bands by the local bands didn't really have a lot of ano pa talaga but we have ano um, yano we have yano mga so, ganon Eric, Eric. oh ganon so that's it yung mga you kay you guys yung mga ganon we played Manila bands sounds and I got the local influence when I was young. When I grew, later on in life, towards the college area talaga, I didn't have a lot of music talaga. It was all people introduced it to me until I got this iPod uh, that introduced me to a lot of whole different music talaga that have never been ano to. Uh, I, I bought it at Green Hills for influence lang talaga. And then it introduced me to pop punk by first time ever in my life, apart from Blink-182 and Green Day. Yung tipong real, the deep into pop punk, they have like made a parade, and, all these guys uh, with a bit of emo into it. The and bazooka. Then, the rock. bazooka rocks kind of yeah, guys. Yeah, and yeah, I've yeah. always figured that I've always liked fast beats, the drums. I didn't really like the slow. It's I like aggressive. Makakaling lahat ng drummers ng era na yan. Who's your favorite? Well, Travis Barker Travis is always, Barker. Always, always got to be ano talaga. It's like, you know, the prime example because apart from him being originally a hip hop drummer, and that's like a very sto- steady, solid, hard guy. What was his hip hop band? He had a hip hop band. Uh, oh, in Trap. Boxcar. Uh, Boxcar. Uh, Hindi right? pa hip hop pa rin yun eh. I mean, he was like collaborating with different DJs eh. Mm. That's why he. But ano talaga? It's more on 
punk beats. Punk But you started playing in the province pa lang, the drums, o the sa college na? Ano, uh, sa probinsya, I was relegated to the drums simply because kami lang yung may drums. <laughs> <laughs> so ikaw na lang, ikaw lang yung marunong kahit pa paano. Sige, so ganun, sa province pa lang. But never really played any regular gigs. Uh, as if I remember, the last gig I played when I was still in Mindanao, Uh, yung Linkin Park, this was song that's I could remember this so well. It was the Linkin Park song, tug 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 ta tug 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 paper cut, cut. Yeah. and even that tug 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 ta tug I couldn't do it with my feet because it was too fast. I would have to do it with the tug 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 ta tug 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 ta tug 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 ta tug tug. Then I could do it. So palo yun na stick yung bass drum. Ayun yun. Pupala bipindutin ko yung bass drum beater with the stick tug 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 para makuha talaga yung buong sound. <laughs> so I've never seen anybody do that. <laughs> yeah, I was that bad, <laughs> but <laughs> so I couldn't do it then. When I got to Manila, I got to UP again, relegated to the drummer because kani kami lang yung my drums. But then people started to play ah originals palang derada dito sa Manila because you know you cover every now and then. But when I, I was introduced to the ano na pag maggig kailangan originals, bro. Ah, ba? So that's the first time I got thinking about writing original songs. Talaga, um, I ended up writing, but they were all mga emotional songs, and I didn't get to use them for giniling. But then, <laughs> 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 imagine. But they're love songs. <laughs> very emo, very love, dark, heartbreaks. Ganun. And then I got to get get that out with Penguin, because a little bit emo pop punkish na feel. But in terms of giniling, wala talaga. And that's it. That's like the musical journey. But now I tend to listen to a lot of uh, yung mga love, mga ganon chain smokers, some of these, and then new rappers. Then talaga uh, both local and yung mga abroad and whatever. Just thank God for Spotify. Talaga. Were just, you were you aware of the as growing up? Because maganda yung yung time nung when you were growing up in Davao. Mm. Were you aware of the music scene, the local music scene? I was. Um, so it was like mga South Border or inabot pa si na Joey and Cynthia si na Popong. Yes, Popong Landero used to come to our house. No. Yes, by my dad and I were. He was like the lights and sound guy of Davao for a long time, oh. so he was everywhere. So who who so else did you did you see? Did you catch mga freestyle South Border? Yes, when they were down south, pa din talaga. Ah. So uh, and. Talagang like, local yung napanood mo, no? Kaya papano na buto ko. Been wondering na ano eh, mataas ang level ng musicianship sa Davao. No? Pag folk when it comes to folk, ga uh, musicians ano, there. It's like whenever I watch, even now, kami punta min Davao and then right. you watch, like, people can play really good guitars. Ah yes. Hindi ko sanggali yung foundation like everybody from Jay Durias to the diba? yes, uh, Cynthia and Joey, yes. and, de ba? Yano si Eric. There's a good scene pa rin in Davao now is and still, yeah, yeah. if you recall the recent yung champion ng music laban yung uh, David versus Goliath was also Davao when mm. and just shows you how the technicality of the Davao when Where will you Davao find the scene in Davao now? Uh, there's more small ito lang that's the thing that's the thing even the locals would admit talaga there's not enough talaga it might even be dying but there's spots talaga sa Suazo Suazo I love Suazo I know yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's a good spot shout out they shout out <laughs> Rizal Bar used to Rizal be Dur- Bar. Uh, Durian Bar right? Durian, Durian Bar but then well, know, it's like a strip a mall na na. what about in ano, yun Matina meron pa rin ano, the MTS is still MTS there is still MTS there's is always still a band there. there's but always a good band it's covers, always always covers. a cover but always very good Um, sometimes you still get good folk there. Mm-hmm. There are jazz bars not in there in Davao, um, but the the, the the you mga rock bands talaga have a very have very few venues now where they can come out now. So, but thankfully, thankfully it's being evened out by the internet. You don't need physical venues anymore. If you want to see even a, even live performance, you could go online, and that's what we've been doing. We've been just like trying to record it live and for people to enjoy it in their own time, and that's the future. By you can't you know people have their own schedules now. You can't fit it. That's life. How, how about sa... Uh, kasi na-mention mo nga kanina na umikot ka rin uh, papunta sa Manila. You do surfing as well, right? Yeah, man. So, I heard na nagka-accident ka. And then, Is it USC? I think right before ng pandemic. To Braille. Oh, oh my God. Ay, grabe. Oh, oh, man. I tell people it's a shark attack. But what is it? But I rode the surfboard and my fin kasi because, you know, I'm being an idiot always hits rocks na diba so it gets sharpened and it's carbon fiber pa I one I got so it's sharp na like a saw and if that or and your skin meet 
it's always your skin is gonna give in. It's not that because that's super strong. Santo. So I was surfing sa Alianga, Surigao del Sur, and it was a pretty big wave. Um, but I'm used to big waves. But that's why it's called a freak accident. <laughs> At that time, uh, and then paghulog ko, the board kind of followed and acted like an axe. And then, oh, and then it was so strong because the wave was also doing this to it. And it was stuck in there. So it was so strong that it broke the fin off off the board. And that it screwed onto the board. Yeah, nah. So talagang, oh, psh, it broke the where the Grab screw it. was. Ano, talaga. And luckily, it didn't get to my bone though. It was just meat and muscle. It was about a centimeter away from the artery of my leg. Otherwise, that would have been it. So the moment I came up, it's like there was no pain, but there was like, bucket my numbness sa uh, right yes, leg. Yes. Ah. But no pain. <laughs> and then it comes up, and the, I bring it up in the water. Ooh. Alam mo yung jelly meat. Pero may ano ka, ka rash guard ka? Wala, just Wala. The, my regular t-shirt and shorts. Oh, Bay, ganun lang. Were you speaking in an accent? <laughs> no. <laughs> what the, the fucking hell is this? <laughs> Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Bloody hell, mate. <laughs> this is but the scratch. You know, but I was like, this is shit that you see in movies. Ganyan tong klaseng damage, man. But I was thinking, okay, just get to the shore, bay. Fuck, I got to the shore. Because it was so early morning, hardly anyone was there. But a couple people did see me now, but it took them a while to get to me. Because it was a big and a shoreline. And then I got to the shore on my own. Because while I was crawling, open wound here, the waves were breaking on it. With the sand just wow. getting into everything. Oh, bah, God. Bah. So I had like three operations. Even after the th- third operation, they could find sand everywhere. Oh, like a bay. But luckily, I can tell you though, it, I never experienced pain from from when it started. It's just what I, the same feeling now. It's like it's numb na in certain areas. And how You know how you can curl your toe like this? This no more na. Just uh, you can, that's why it's affected some of my drumming because uh, the downstroke is you know I have to relearn that and build new sets of muscles for it. Cause it's eh. So you're re- rediscovering drumming from playing uh, eight nooks. Yeah. Uh, electric drums. Tell us about that 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 thing. I love that kit, man. It can detect ghost notes and stuff. Just the right bounce. The N-U-X. Like, uh, yes, the the M7. So it's very good. Cause and then the and perfect na I know that when the kick the kick then as well and I like the nest the, ne, the, the net mesh kind of I know because when like we played the motaka song and has a lot of ghost notes in it it could really pick it up that like ah. so it's got a lot of modules so when you play it you can choose how to go about it just so you can get the feel of it and then you take out that data and I give it to my guys in Manu Gentu very good with audio and video you, you were telling me earlier your process explain yeah. so you go to to, to the studio the flying house the flying house the you tree get house. you get another musician like this afternoon you get lalai yes and then you're listening to, to a pre-recorded track or your yes drum. the actual track uh of in their album or it depends if i choose like a live performance but most of the time i choose the album talaga because that's like i mentioned earlier the element so of nostalgia both of you are is there. playing over that yes so we listen and, to it and then it's getting recorded as MIDI yes, it's to getting, the computer. The drums are getting recorded as, me, as MIDI. The, the bass will be recorded as audio. Yes. And then Manu will... He takes them all, um, mixes and masters it, and then replaces takes, the, replaces drums, replaces the, the, the drums the though, MIDI. to make it as native to the original recording as possible. Wow. But that way, it doesn't really stand out. You know, it's like, what is that? I never really heard that in the original recording. It has then, to blend in. Uh, the... The original recording, he uses AI to take out the bass and the drums. Yes, ah, the real parts. Brilliant. The now the thing about that, probably people are probably wondering, how about when you upload, doesn't get, I know, banned and censored and stuff. Yes. So the brilliant thing about and, and the guys at Facebook, and we mostly just upload this on Facebook anyway. And we started not because of the money; it's more on just we really love doing these songs, and you know, I I want to play it, and people, I I want people want to see. The happiness of certain people when they enjoy these things together. When we upload it, Facebook has this thing where, it, oh, automatically the algorithm and the software detects, oh, this music is owned by someone it's else. It's an old urban dub song owned by Warner, by Warner, oh. things like that. Warner, for one, for example, in certain songs uh, that I've done with with their music, is they uh, a prompt. It's an automatic prompt, and you don't even have to. You can't even do anything. You just basically open it and accept, 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 because you got no choice. They're just telling you what this is what's gonna happen. 
I upload something, they own it, they say, we, this is music owned by someone else. What's going to happen is you're going to share revenue on the ad. Meaning they get money, you get money. Ah, uh, you both get money. Oh. Uh, That's cool. But then some also owners of music say, oh, you use their music. They're going to get all the money. But don't worry, you can still use the music. Okay, then lang yun. Oh, it's just like, oh, okay As long as they then. don't take it down. Exactly. Yeah. I know, okay lang din ako. Yeah, man, it's, it's okay. I just really want people to Who see this. Who chooses the songs? I do. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like from parts of my life, you know. It's like... That's what it is. I mean, that's what a vlogger is. The money you're showing your parts of your life, and I figured I could do it in terms of music. So these are parts of my life. These songs that I'm actually getting to play with the actual musicians who made them. Man, I cry whenever I. It's like it's an emotional trip every time I do these things. Because not only is it an emotional song with a distinct memory in my life, a lot of people have that same feeling for these songs as well. And it's the shared, it's that shared experience. And then they get me to see play with the actual person. It's like themselves getting to see play with the actual person. Gets, yes, it makes yes. us all cry. It's amazing, all these things. I see the comments and the togetherness. It just gets them out of places. It's a beautiful thing when you guys share something so positive. No negativity about it at all. That's the beauty of it. You create content with absolutely nothing to hate about. How beautiful is that? These days, nagita ka namin palagi sa yun nga sa Flying House nag drums. Paano mo na kilala and naging friends sila tropa sila eight. The music scene is mm-hmm. amazingly small sa <laughs> Philippines and eight has always been yung queso cheese. They've always been musical heroes because well they're older than me obviously. And you guys, <laughs> like, so I've been listening to everyone in the scene and you got to know people. Drummers, we talked about it earlier. Drummers have always been uh, had All a way. The wow had a way to talk with every single musician because you know y- you can play with me. You know I just keep a steady beat, do your thing, and they're gonna love us. I talk to these guys whenever backstage, and then the eight has always been one of the guys that I've always gravitated towards because of sh- a lot of common interests. Um, mga ano talaga ba? Just, and that's how I got to know him. He invited me to his place. He had that. You wanted to you say know. bakes? Yeah, well, I can't say it. <laughs> You're allowed to say bakes. I'm allowed that's to interest. say bakes. Oh, yeah, that's good. You're allowed to say anything. We have very shared interests talaga. <laughs> and then, creativity wise as well, ganon. And then, si Manu, I, I, meet, I met in the music industry as well. And he also, ano, talagang in. We see each other at events for the longest time, and then later on, kaya nga nao lang nangyayari because we find out each other's gifts and talents pala na we didn't know before, and now we're not committed to certain uh, groups and organizations, and we can finally do whatever we want, and this is what we come up with, and I like it like men- like the road trip. There is no plan. There is just flow. Do you call it something now, the road trip? Are you gonna call it land tripping or something? Maybe I might. I might. That's nobody's used land tripping. Land that's, tripping. That's the title of your new album. Bagay so, bay. I'm tripping all the land way. Tripping. <laughs> yeah, man. Actually, the series. It could be. It will be a series that we started on because we're taking a different road back. So it's a different set than a, a, a car company should sponsor you. They should, buy. They, they should. should. And also... We're putting you know, it out there. A motorcycle as well. Motorcycles. <laughs> motorcycles. Uh, plural. Because, well, you know, the camera is empty. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. if the car breaks down, we need uh, secondary vehicles. <laughs> motorcycles. Uh, so, I, like, I like road tripping. I've always been on the move, by On the move is very important. Starts with this. You've, you've, you're, you've been a dad then I mean, you've naging dad ka recently, tama yes. ba? So, yeah. how do you balance naman yung everything you're doing, pupunta ka Manila, ganun, or, this, or kayang-kaya, whatever. I took a long time off around 2015 from everything, from the band life, from Bogart, just to focus on being a dad. Uh, and that's when I, that, that's when I try, ano, tried to figure out where is the balance? How do I figure it out? Pandemic hit. Through off balance, what were you talaga. doing if you weren't? Uh, I was in the no na provincia. Uh, I wasn't doing content. I was being a radio DJ. Ah. So I just had like a. Sa Davao or? Sa Butuan City. Oh, wow. So in a small town. Wow. How'd you um, end up there? I know because I wanted to find a place to raise my kids that simulated Davao back in the 90s, and Butuan was exactly wow. the place. We didn't know anyone there. We had no relatives there. I just figured it's a good place. Has an airport. It really feels like Davao. And Do you my surfing? My, walang surfing. Walang it was surfing. about two hours away, and I did that for almost every day. I drove two hours away. Para magsurf. Para magsurf. 
And I figured I needed a job, but I wanted a job with music. But I didn't want to be in a band by there, and I wasn't in a good place. But I just wanted to listen to music the whole day. I walked into the nearest English station, na, na, na radio station. Luckily, they knew me. Bogart. <laughs> Bogart needs a job. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> Just go up with the hat. <laughs> I didn't need to. Thankfully. How many hats have you had since? Anyway, some character. people think, I say, I know this is just a cheap hat that you can just buy from a guy who probably is wearing it there. Like you want, to, <laughs> you know? It's just so everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm we're not very sentimental with things. I've lost so many hats along the way. How uh, many have you think have you had? Probably over a hundred. Over a hundred. Over a hundred. It's never really consistent. You know, we try not to make it about the hat. It's about the the whole thing it's not a single piece of thing so but you know I could just give this away look at the state of this thing and the only reason I'm using this is an old hat I had at home the only reason I'm using this is because I lost the newer hats <laughs> so I have to use this so that's it I don't tell like I've had hundreds of hats along the way but I find that the great thing about the hat is um, the Superman kind effect you know how the glasses yes, kind of they yes. can't tell it's true because I once walked into a packed event Without the hat, and then I'm gonna shoot na ready na tayo. I'm gonna shoot na tayo. Sige. Boom, 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 boom. Picture. Oh, alana. Ni tayo mga shoot kaya. Oh, never na kami ng shoot kasi nina natapos yung pictures. But I was walking the whole place without the hat, no problem. So that it makes a big difference, and I like it because if people check out my account, they they see that I'm a very private person. I hardly post pictures of my family or whatever or whatever I'm really doing in life. It's mostly about what the character is doing all about the character because it is about the character Marco Ho as me is a completely different person from the character um, and I like my privacy especially for my kids and, and, and it depends because that's what I'm used to if what do like, kids call you Bogart then? <laughs> no man they don't even care I mean you know, you know, as but they, always, know. You know they know they know because they know it's this 8 and, and, and 2 and 8 Two and, eight. 2 and 8 the 2 wala pa. Wala pa. but yeah. the 8 doesn't care doesn't even watch my videos talaga you know, it's like, I don't know if it's like a, an anger kind of thing that si daddy talaga. I don't know. But she likes it, but you're not funny. Okay. <laughs> Very humbling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> different kind of generation. No, again, lang. So it's a different kind of thing. Oh, and generation. I like it that when I take off the hat, I get to have my personal life back. You know, nobody hardly... What I get, because I have a very common Filipino face, I like to think that... I'm actually Chinese, who looks like a Mexican, but speaks like an Australian. <laughs> but it's a good, proud Filipino. <laughs> like a mix. What happens most of the time is like, they always say, Kamukahan niya, no? Oh, pero baka kasi hindi. Huwag na, huwag na. Huwag kasabi ba na kaya? And that's that. I always notice that. And I know, oh, okay, China. Pero suit mo yung t-shirt mo. And it plays sometimes. When I want to be right. <laughs> so, and, and I like it that you know, and then when I put on the hat it's like boom completely magical different effect it's like hey it's Bogart and then without I get to have my life it, he looks like Salt Papi ah. Ah. he looks like El Covito ah. he also looks like that guy Sacanto I look like everyone. Salt Papi, we were talking about oh, Salt Papi. Apparently, Papi. he's in, in my hometown. Oh. Right yes. Now. Kamabayan mo yun. Kamabayan mo yun. Kamabayan mo yun. Talaga. Oh, I gotta reach out. I gotta reach out. We talk. Yeah. We guess because nga, sabi ko nga atin. Ah, he's he's replied. Did, did you talk to him in an accent? No. <laughs> we talk like ano, online lang talaga. Batuan lang lang ano. You should, you should have him. I, I think it. He has a British accent, right? He's UK. UK. Yeah. Pero tagalog pa rin siya. Yeah. Hindi niya ano. Hindi niya tagalog niya kaya tagalog namin sa Quezon. That'd be funny. But she still do that. Nakita ko sa vlog nag-order siya ng taho. Parang normal lang eh. Parang parang normal na local. Normal tagalog eh. Ay pa rin niya. I think he still got the accent eh. The normal Filipino way. Do you have any more? I'm good. Thank you. Tell us where they can find you to hire you. Yeah. Sige, if you guys, ano, uh, for bookings like, you know, uh, hosting sometimes hosting. I host, uh, for uh, product endorsements or whatever you want me to do, it's no dick sucking. <laughs> You know, I already said that long time ago. Not maybe if it's a good looking dick. 
and then generally for those who just want to give me money you can contact me through facebook bogart explorer from davao city you've also got the instagram page um and then if you message that we'll send you a number where you can call <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, a lot of and then you know just generally whatever Your you channels want to do, instagram facebook and uh tiktok i got tiktok bogart the at bogart the explorer what's the busiest tiktok ano the facebook right now because i'm at 982,000 i'm just so like i need to okay. make it a million so i can <laughs> focus on the other yeah. things now you know what i mean i can leave that alone now okay i have a million go back to youtube and the, i've been ignoring the other things because i'm just so like so bring up it me and it took me so long mm-hmm. because for when i took a break in 2015 i left it at 320,000 back in 2021 i said fuck i got to make content again because you know funds are running low <laughs> and it started working so from 328 at the start of 2021 up to now i made it to 900 something but then to 900 up until 1 million it's taking me four months by or five na now and it's driving me crazy because i think there's an algorithm thing that before you really hit that million they really give you a hard time make sure you really <laughs> earn you deserve that million it. <laughs> by you'll get it soon you'll get it soon thank you for spending thank your you so much morning yeah with us thank you and for having we'd like to thank crazy ramen for hosting our venue we'll have ramen after this you Saka know. shout out then pala sa we legendary from davao si kay mark, mark yo mark then bye all right thank you thank you we thank should do that you. drumming thing soon hi